Hey, what's going on? It's Scott. Somebody asked me to do a video about police detective work. So what I did was I interviewed retired NYPD cold case detective Jason Palomara about the reality of being a detective and what you actually have to investigate at times to which he gets real very fast about this and just how intense it can be. So viewer discretion is advised, but then he goes more into advice. Let's get right to it. What inspired you to become a detective in law enforcement? You know, listen, you watch the shows, the TV shows, right? You're on YPD Blues, and uh, I, I won't name some of the others because I'll really date myself, but I guess the same as you want to serve, right? And uh, it just progressed into police work. I started out as a regular patrol officer, and then I went into plain clothes, and, uh, plain clothes units, and then uh, graduated up to the detective squad. I uh, worked about, about 10 years, just shy of 10 years in the uh, 84th Precinct Detective Squad doing all types of crimes, and then over to the cold case homicide squad. Can you share the most challenging cold cases you worked on and, and how you approached them? They all have their own challenging components, but one that I've talked about a lot is of Rashawn Brazell. He went missing on Valentine's Day back in, I believe it was 2006, and he was subsequently found a few days later in uh, multiple locations throughout the city. That investigation, uh, me going down, my partner and I going down many different roads. Uh, we traveled domestically, internationally on these cases, interviewed countless witnesses and many folks. And fortunately, that came to a positive conclusion with an arrest and identification of who the person was. The DAs that worked on this case, hands down, some of the best I've ever worked with. Oh, but good. The, the greater office made certain decisions that the case is not being prosecuted now. Oh, Luckily, thanks. this individual is in on another homicide. Uh, he's been sentenced and hopefully we'll never see freedom again. Yeah. But that doesn't give full closure to mom in, in getting full justice for her son. Yes, she knows what happened, but you know, for him not to be specifically prosecuted for that crime is, is heart-wrenching for her. But what yeah. came out of that is a friendship with her and her family that will I'll always have. And it's that that's the beauty of some of these horrific cases. That's not what a lot of people hear about is just no. how tight knit the law enforcement officers can become with the families of victims in the, in the search for suspects or while processing a case. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, you said you had another uh, story that was tough to handle or, or another cold case. This is the case of Chanel Petro Nixon. She was a 16 year old uh, female that went missing uh, as well. She um, unfortunately was found uh, disposed of in trash bags by somebody. And, uh, you know, in speaking to, again, the family, mom, dad, dad is forever grateful for the individual that found her because uh, he says that he, he would have never found Chloe, would have never known where his daughter was. He was, he's so grateful that, that she was located. We know who did it. He is in jail for other crimes and uh, we're waiting his uh, time in court. So that hasn't seen the end, uh, the conclusion yet. But uh, again, s same result is I get messages from from the family, from mom every holiday, you know, whether it's Merry Christmas, you know, Happy New Year, we, we still keep in touch. And and that's, you know, for, for the detectives or, or, or any Leos that are watching this, when you're hitting those roadblocks or those perceived walls and what you're doing, if you're intentional about what you can glean from it, then you'll be better off. And it's totally up to you, right? It could be negative or you can pull the positive from it. Through your investigations, you are doing good work. Based on all you've gone through and worked through, what do you believe are essential skills needed to be a good detective? Why don't we start with patience? I had the luxury in cold case of having time. Right. You got a lot of these detectives out there working their butts off that it's things are happening and they're responding. Right. I have the benefit of looking back on all the great work they did. Right. They don't have that when something has just happened. And what they do then can be so valuable years and years down the line for, for guys like me, for, for, for detectives like me. I get to look at all the great work they did. I get to look at all the reports, all the interviews, or if there were video. Well, sometimes these cold cases, there's, there's no video because they're, they're really old. But I have the ability to sit back with a little bit more time and patience than they might have. But patience, patience with yourself and patience with the investigation. Hollywood, for lack of a better phrase, TV, movies. Okay. They portray these detectives walking into a room, some of them slamming a folder down on a table, 
making a person talk. It doesn't work that way. People have rights. <laughs> you have to respect those rights, but you have to be good at questioning if anyone's willing to talk. Can you give a reality of what it's like to interview people, whether witnesses, victims, suspects, that separates us from TV? It's really, it applies to, to life and human interaction, right? In an interview room, if you don't know the person you're talking about better than they know themselves, and you're ill-prepared, right? I want to know everything about you. I want to know. And again, that, that, that was the luxury we had so many years down the line. I can look at everything you've done in your life up until the point where we're in front of one another that the detective doesn't have on day one. So I need to know everything about you as much as I can. That's going to help me in that, that dialogue. So, you know, doing your homework, preparing and knowing their personality, right? Uh, knowing your one approach is not going to work for every person you're in front of in those rooms. You're going to have to change it and alter it to fit that, that, that individual, uh, along with what that case is about, the facts of that case, the evidence of that case, you know, where, where do you want to be after that interview? What is your goal going into that room? Well, in addition to interviewing people, can you just walk us through a typical day or week in the life of a cold case detective? I can speak only to, to my experience in the NYPD's cold case homicide squad. And a lot of it was self-initiated, right? So we would scour over, uh, unfortunately, there was um, no shortage of cases to pick from, no shortage of homicides. Right. Um, with the advancement of technology, we would focus on, at least I would focus on some close contact situations, right? Whether it's a strangling, a, a stabbing, um, something that has close contact that would provide a little bit more evidence to, to work with, right? But I, I like to look for the, the helpless victim, right? I like to look for whether it was the child or the elderly person or Again, the innocent victim that were was at the wrong place at the wrong time. So I, I gravitated to, to those types of cases. So so once we found the case or we're now, you know, uh, assigned or, or investigating it. And again, I can only speak for me. I'd break it apart, right? I would spend a significant amount of time. Some of these cases, one, one of the cases had, I think it was like 15 boxes worth of reports. Wow. So organizing what organizing for yourself and how it will make your job a lot easier uh, is important. So you start from the beginning, go through everything. I want to read everything. I want to know everything that's in all those boxes. In a case like that, it took forever. Uh, I want to know everyone that was interviewed, everyone that wasn't interviewed. I want to watch all the video. I want to see all the evidence. For these detectives that are maybe new in this and you're overwhelmed and you're looking, oh my, where do I start? Just start right where you're sitting, right? Just read the case, read the case, go through it. Once you feel comfortable, I, I have a good understanding of what's going on here or what happened, what pieces maybe you're missing, then make a list of what do I want to do next and, and write it out, right? Anything in life, right? We're overwhelmed. Write it out. But now I see it on paper. It's out of my brain. It's on paper. Do one thing. You've now completed the one thing. What advice would you give to someone who's interested in pursuing as a career and in detective work? You're going to spend a lot of time away from your family. Right. And that's that's something that the public doesn't see. They see the hour, uh, well, 45 minutes with commercials, beginning and end, conclusion, complete, case solved on TV. But what's packed into that real life hour is years spent away from your kids, your family, years worth of canceling at the last minute events that your wife or your husband now has to go to alone. Missed school events that your kids look out and don't see you sitting there and only see one of you there um, or any. That's going to happen. Knowing that it's going to happen and learning ways to help get in front of that is huge. And I know we veered away from kind of the detective work preparation, but that's preparation for detective work. Because if you're not happy and healthy there, you're going to be a terrible detective. Amen. So yeah. you you have to, that's part of preparing preparing to be a good detective, to be a good officer is the, and, and I, I, it just all goes back to the health and wellness of that individual. If you're not happy and healthy, you're not going to be able to help anybody else. You might for, for the short term, and I was for the short term, but it's going to come knocking on the door eventually. So that's part of being a good detective is making sure you're taking care of you and your family and you'll be able to be awesome in what you do. All right, go ahead and click the link right up there to get Jason's book that he co-authored, Living Blue.